Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is James Steiner and welcome back to Sakura Spirit. I don't know if I love this game or hate this game at this point. Well, we'll just continue where I left off because quite honestly, I've run out of things to say about it. Ugh. <clears throat> It had been a week since I came to this world. Okay, so I think we jumped forward a little bit. Lovely. I spent my days helping out around the... Oh, wait. Oh. So it's only... So... What? So it's only been like... Th the, the, the From the introduction all the way to the point where he starts training. It's only been like, what? Three days? At best? If I remember correctly? Yeah, it's only been about two or three days. Wow. And now it's been a whole week, so we jump at least four days later. At least. If I have my math right. Okay. I spent my days helping out around the village and training with Mio and Narumi. I even tried my hand at repairing some of the damage done by Sakura. I still had no clue where I was, but I was enjoying the time spent here. That, uh, that sentence is so awkward, I, d I can't even start. Okay, I can't even start. Everything reminded me of things I had read about in the school history books. From the buildings to the people. Pardon me. I looked at the nearby girls and let out a sigh. History books never said anything about fox girls or spirits. There were mentions of them in various religious texts, but they weren't real. So, you're sure this wedding sash would be able to get me back to my world? In the end, Mako had been able to research the spell even further, and... Okay, I, I have to improvise here. In the end, Mako had been able to research the spell even further, and had made huge progress over the past few days. Jesus Christ, they should have spell-checked this thing. Tsuri Yuri was able to provide some detail she's blushing. She believes that the spell will return something to where it belongs. I suppose it's worth a try. It will work. I know it will. I just need some time to prepare. I'm not sure if I should be grateful or worried. Still, I didn't think you'd be able to figure it out so fast, Mako-chan. I just love the way some of the names just roll off the tongue. And then the added, um, god, what is, I guess it would be technically a title? But it's kind of a family slash friend, uh, I don't know, the Japanese culture is very strange and I want to learn more about it. I'll probably learn more, not in the next video, but probably the next time I decide to pick this game up. Anyway, <laughs> yep, magic is super easy. Just a wave and a flash and it's done. Except the time it will take you to prepare the ingredients. Do not underestimate the arcane arts, Mako-chan. You have a gift. Make sure you treat it with the respect it deserves. The blushing can go away now. I mean, seriously, it made sense when she was talking about Suri Yuri. Now it doesn't. And is there something on my screen? Sorry, it looks like there's something on my screen, but I'm, I'm incorrect. A wave and a flash. Um, I'm not going to end up exploding into fireworks or something, right? Absolutely, probably not. I guarantee it. Don't worry, Takani. I wouldn't do anything that'll hurt you, I hope. Okay, I looked up at the screen right as soon as I finished reading that and her expression changed. That's kind of funny. Unless you happen to be made of clay, glass, wood, or stone. These all seem to shatter when you try to cast a spell on them. Oh, so you've already tried it. Good to know. Onisama, you didn't have to tell him that. Yep. Oh boy, good thing the human body is mostly made up of water. Let's take a break. I'm feeling a bit distracted by the younger girl's excitement. I didn't notice as sweat had started forming on my forehead, a sudden dizziness, a sudden dizziness coming over me. Ugh. Without a warning, it would just without warning would have been sufficient. Without warning, I collapsed onto the ground, my breathing heavy and ragged. As my vision faded, the girls ran towards me, shouting my name in concern. We're going to get the etchy now, right? More etchy, huh? It's like... Yeah. Let's see if it's like clockwork. And the mu music shifted again. But I see a distinct lack of etchy. I slowly regained consciousness, opening my eyes to take in the familiar surroundings of the room I had, a I had occupied during my stay within this unfamiliar world. I was surprised to find the two fox spirits in the room with me, seemingly in the middle of preparing something. 
I'm surprised. Takakun, it is good to see you awake again. You were unconscious for quite some time. How are you feeling? A bit tired, but I'm okay. What happened? You sprung quite a high fever. I've prepared some food for you. It will be ready soon. Meiko-chan is preparing a spell that will hopefully improve your condition. I think you have a cold. You were so hot and sweaty, I had to get you out of your clothes. To wash them. Oh, he's naked again. My head still felt a little fuzzy from the rest, but I was probably just exhausted from the constant training. I guess even a hero gets sick sometimes. It took me a moment to realize that Machi what Machiko had said. Raising the blanket, I found myself left in nothing but a pair of shorts. I instantly blushed. Come on, dude, you're still in your shorts. You're at least not in the nude. Why would you take my clothes? Being near Nick. Shut the fuck up. Sorry, this thing. He, this character is somewhat annoying at times. Okay, it's it's not like you're fucking naked, dude. Okay, being near naked. What? What is it with these characters not always being so insecure? Uh, anyway, being near naked in the presence of someone as pretty as Machiko, I kept the blanket close enough to be a second layer of skin. I'm almost ready, Onisama. Oh. Okay, that's not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. Machiko suddenly slipped past me, startling me in the process as her hands gently grasped my shoulders, pulling me against her. None of our robes fit you. This was the best we could do. I need you to relax. Easier said than done. Who would be able to relax with a girl hugging them? The lack of clothes only made me more nervous. Just lean back against me and watch. Meiko-chan is about to give you a demonstration of her powers. You should have waited until after she had started the demonstration before you showed me this. It would have just been, quite honestly, a little bit more... What's the term I'm looking for? Climactic. I think it's the correct word I'm looking for. It would be rude to not pay attention, and I would hate to have to punish you for being rude. As those words were whispered into my ear like the temptations of a succubus, I kept my eyes on the younger sibling. The sight of the young fox spirit, seemingly in the middle of preparing some sort of ritualistic spell, caused me to momentarily forget about my embarrassment. Don't be alarmed if you feel any unusual sensations. Once the spell takes a hold, it usually takes a few moments to flow through you. Feel free to grab hold of me if you need to. Despite my attempt to protest, I decided that it was best not to worry too much about it. It wasn't like she was going to blow me up or anything. Okay. As though in a daze, I watched... It should be watched. As small glowing orbs started to gather in the room. Urged on by the soft whispers of the young fox spirit who had finally started her spell. Maybe I should accept Machiko's invitation before something blew up in my face. And... Uh, yeah! Whoa, okay. As I watched, the girl began to swirl her arms around. Tiny balls of light, like fireflies, began to appear in the vortex of her swirling hands spinning around her. The light had a warm feeling. Okay, that is not... Those are not fireflies. That is fire. That is fire. <laughs> She's going to burn all of her clothes off, isn't she? She's going to burn her own clothes off. I have a very sneaky suspicion that that's what's going to happen. The light had a warm feeling to it, not hurtful to the eyes, but still more intense than a candle or a light bulb. Finally, she began to move her whole body, a dance of sorts that made the light flare even brighter. It makes me jealous seeing her like this. Not of her power, but her beauty. In this moment, she is the most beautiful creature in the world. I won't disagree with you there. Ah, but would you choose her over me? Which do you like better, maturity or youthful vigor? Oh. Why is this? Why would you say that? About your own sister, no less. These people, the, this writing makes no sense. Oh, by the way, uh, another game came out. Uh, Sakura Angels? Sakura Angel or something like that. It's along the same lines as this. Made by the same people. Different story. But from what I've read up from the reviews, it's about the same. As far as this is concerned. 
Though I might have hopes that it's written slightly better than this, because there are certain things that still don't make sense. Or perhaps a stern tsundere is more your type. Or are you, I could tell she was just poking fun at me despite my current state. I was about to offer a reply in return when I felt tingling, when I felt a tingle inside me. It felt similar to the sensation of swallowing fizzing candy only throughout my entire body. Oh, this feels weird. And it's done. And he didn't even explode. Yay! Wait, what? Tell me, do you feel any better, Takakun? I feel a bit weird, like my entire body is tingling. I really hope I won't explode. <laughs> if you were going to explode, you would have done it by now. You'll be super fine in no time at all. Dinner! Dinner! Almost as soon as she finished her spell, Mako clutched her head in her hands and fell to her knees. What the fuck? Machiko seemed as startled as myself at, by Mako's sudden display of pain. As I tried to get back onto my feet, Machiko rushed to her side. Mako, you need to show more restraint. Please, lie down. Takakun, could you keep an eye on her? I'm going to prepare something that will help her. Of course. Come, Mako-chan. You should lie down over here. Finally regaining my footing, I made my way over to Mako's side. After making sure her sister was left in good hands, Machiko left the room, leaving me alone with the groaning girl who had been struck by a nasty headache after casting her spell. Uh, Onisama, Takani. Don't worry, Mako-chan. I'm sure your sister will be back soon. Try to relax a bit until then. Takani, do you like Onisama? Where did that question come from? That's what I'm asking. Onisama asked, but you never answered. I don't mind, you know. If you like Onisama over me, I'm sure. I would sure like it if you liked me, though. I, um, how do I explain this? I paused briefly, trying to think of a good way to respond when I finally decided to play it safe. I raised a hand and gently patted the girl's head, offering a warm smile. I like you both. Just like I like Narumi-chan and mayo san they're all friends I've managed to make in this new world. Okay, at least you're trying to keep them in the friend zone. No, silly, of course you like all of us. But who do you, you know, like, like? Oh, boy. Onesama was asking about your type, and I know what that means. Oh, you mean it like that. To be honest, I've been focusing so much on my judo that I haven't really thought about it. How about I make you and your sister a promise? A promise? Yeah, a promise. I'm not really ready to answer a question like that yet. Judo has always been it. It's why I need to get back to my world to win that match. It's been my dream since I was a kid, and real men don't give up on their dreams. But I'll promise you that after my match, I'll do everything I can to return to this world. This time as a man who will be ready to answer your question. Okay, I just have to say one thing. At least he fucking says it and isn't undecisive. He has other things on his mind and he says as much. Thank you. Something that frustrates me to no end about certain anime is that the main male protagonist doesn't ever choose. And it's painfully obvious which one they actually like the most. It's just they won't come out and fucking say it. At least here, he's actually distracted by something else. He hasn't really gotten to know these girls that well. He's only known them for about a week. And he has other priorities, and he says as much. So at least he's more focused and is actually willing to talk, and my phone is vibrating. Shut up. Let's continue. So, now I'll have a reason to come back here. Because the real man always keeps his promise. <laughs> that makes me happy. As we sat there for a while, I suddenly heard strange shuffle a str I heard a strange shuffling sound. They put A's where they don't need them and they take out A's where they need them. Mako apparently heard it as well, squeaking as she toppled back onto her rear. More etchy, lovely. 
<laughs> I fell again. I guess I'm not all better yet. You probably shouldn't move around too much, Mako-chan. You're probably tired after the thing you just did. Nyeh. I'm fine. Her tail twitched about eagerly behind her. Hiking her skirt up high enough to be revealing. Hmm, are you now? You seem to be fidgeting a lot for some reason. No! You're seeing things! I'm fine! Amused by her behavior, I watched on as she curled her hand and twitched her ears using a voice that didn't sound quite like her. In the back of my head, I found myself thinking that she looked very much like, well, like a cat. Is it normal for a fox to act like a cat? I could have sworn you looked ready to pounce a mouse any second just now. Yeah. Okay, that sounds so much like nyan, which is the Japanese way of saying meow. Magic makes me do weird things sometimes. One time, Onesama had to get a ladder because I climbed a tree and was building a next nest. Ugh. Speaking of mice, I think Takani looks like. Wh oh God, why? W -w -w Wait, I'm totally a Tom, not a Jerry. Huh? Silly Takani, talking about your world, trying to confuse me. I'm definitely going to pounce you. She's acting like a fucking cat. My eyes quickly scan the area around me, hoping to find something I could distract her with, at least long enough for Machiko to return. I spotted a long piece of thread off to one side and decided to grab it, dangling it in front of Mako's face. Pounce this instead! Nya! The girl began to swat and lash at the string, putting a bit of distance between the two of us. Happy that I had managed to prevent another embarrassing scene, I lied back. Only to be greeted by the ever-rising skirt of Mako, reminding me of the exact reason the sister had gone to the village in the first place. Wait, wait my Mako, John, if you jump, I will see something that can't be unseen. Your skirt is about to. I waved the hand in her general direction, averting my eyes as I tried to hide the blush on my face. What? Kia! With a shriek that undoubtedly shook the mansion's very foundation, the girl slammed a hand down onto her skirt, hiding herself from me in hopes of saving her dignity. Oh no, I'm not a maiden anymore. I can't wear white at my wedding. I swear I didn't see anything. You're totally still a maiden, but please tell your sister to get you to some underwear. If not for your own sake, then for that of the entire male species. Onesama, Takani says we need underwear. As the girl called out, I felt another wave of Disney dizziness wash over me. My vision began to swim, and I felt myself shiver. If this was indeed a cold, it seemed like I had drawn the short end of the straw. I let out a groan and lied back down again, clutching my own body. Let's leave it there, because I digressed way too much, and we've had not one, but two, well, technically three, but the one at the very end was definitely edgy. So, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, click the like button, leave a comment, share with your friends, and also, I will be here again with Sakura Spirit in about a couple days time. So again, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.